Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. It is Wednesday, August 17th. Today is Wednesday. Apparently yesterday I thought it was Wednesday and it was Tuesday. And anyways, it's all kinds of drama when you are on vacation. Uh, but today's daily financial news, uh, we are really ramping up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's existing home sales is going to be a big number for this channel. Uh, it's something we're going to talk about at the end. I will be asking you for some audience participation, so get ready for that. We will close with that topic. Once again, we are going to guess uh, what the numbers are, make some predictions, see what happens, see how broken all of our collective crystal balls are. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go through the order that I read this material. Usually I have the whiteboard behind me, but it doesn't fit in a suitcase. So we're doing this from good old pieces of paper. First and foremost, home builders, right? We got that home builder number yesterday. It was ugly. Single family starts down over 10%. It is what we expected. It is not going to get better anytime soon. It is part of real estate being in a depression pulling the economy into a recession. So again, everything that we expected on this channel. What is interesting is cancellations. Cancellations are up 16%. Now, without context, you might see that 16% and go, wow, crazy. Did you know? Did you know that 12.5% of new home purchases were canceled last July? Last July, interest rates were much, much better. So again, it is not, um, it's not good news, obviously. If you're a home builder, you don't want to see your cancellations increase. Uh, but it's certainly not um, unheard of, right? We were 12.5% in a really good market, which was July last year. And now we're at 16%. I did note that Texas, Texas cancellation rates were crazy. Texas cancellation rates 27%, 27. Last July, 11. Now that's a, that's a 150% jump. So I would definitely tell you Texas is feeling the brunt of this. At least it feels that way in the numbers. Again, Texas cancellations, 27%. National, 16. Uh, last July, nationally, 12 and a half. Texas 11. So you really saw a flip flop, right? Last July, Texas was below the median or the average. Actually, I don't know if this is average. This is probably average. Um, but now it is significantly above the average. Uh, so again, if you're inv investing in Texas, interesting times. It doesn't matter. Remember, your buy box is that all that matters. You need to look at your buy box and your buy box only. I did see that American Airlines is buying 20 supersonic planes from a company called Boom. I don't know. Would you jump on a supersonic plane, you know, get to Europe in like 90 minutes? I don't know. The last supersonic plane I think we had was the Concorde, I think. No. Was it the Concorde? I don't know. Anyways, I don't know. I don't know if I'd get on that. Uh, probably going to be very expensive, but anyways. Uh when we are thinking about home builders, remember something we've talked about in the past. Home builders are going to need to pivot. What are they doing right now? Right now, they are selling inventory that's finished. They are going to sell it at a discount. Home builders are nothing more than Target and Walmart. Their product just isn't TVs and toasters. It is a finished home. They need to get it off their books. They need to replenish cash so that they can go into hibernation and slow down. Home builders will be laying off people. Home builders will be slowing down. Home builders will be canceling options on land. These are all things we should expect. We should expect new home builds to slow down. So these people talking about excess inventory, that's just not how business works. They're going to slow down. They were at 916 this month. They'll be at nine, you know, or they'll be at, 8, 12 next month, they're just going to slow down. Uh, Realtor.com put out the hottest zip codes, which I thought was interesting. I got the top five for you. They're all in kind of the, the central or really mainly in the northeast. Four out of the five are in the northeast with one in the central. 
Number five, Wyndham, Maine. Wyndham, Maine. Number four, Deary, New Hampshire. Number three, Worthington, Ohio. Number two, Nassau, North or New Hampshire. And finally, Brighton, New York. I got to reach out to the lumberjack. I think he might invest in Deary, New Hampshire. We did a video about a month ago where his market was gr way unhealthy, meaning no inventory days on market like two. Affordability was terrible. Um, that's what the numbers say. People, Basically, what's happening in these hot markets, in my opinion, is you're getting money from wealthy areas moving into town, right? They're, they're selling out of... I don't know, New York, and they're going to New Hampshire. They're selling out of Massachusetts and going to New Hampshire. Uh, so it's very, very interesting. So let's talk about transactions crashing 50%, not uh, pulling down price. That's probably one of the most common things that I say that gets the most reaction. I think it's pretty clear by now that we are seeing a transaction crash. While I was first, there are others, although I'm calling for much more severe. People are calling for a 6 or 8% crash in transactions. I'm calling for 30 to 50%. Again, folks, the 52-year spreadsheet that we give you in this channel shows you that it happened before. When rates double, builders cut activity in half and existing home sales get cut in half. I believe we are experiencing that right now. I believe the Fed broke the housing market. I believe the natural order of first-time home buyer to move up buyer is broken and broken for years. So again, what is going to happen? Or why will, not, why will prices not crash? One, there are no truly motivated sellers. There's not waves of arms resetting. There are not banks with REOs that must sell. Number two, sellers also don't have to sell, right? There is a difference. Sellers might want to, but when they you know, list it at their wish pricing and they don't get it, they are happy to stay put. Something else that you are going to see increasingly going forward is sellers are going to simply rent their home. We are going to see people rent their homes. And then finally, people are going to want to sell, but uh, they are going to find that it's hard to buy anything. As for one of the comments, uh, yes, iBuyers are certainly becoming motivated sellers. I totally agree with that. I do think that iBuyers will likely wise up at some point and they will go and... Um, sell to a hedge fund or something like that. They're not going to sell a thousand a time going forward. So again, they're not going to sell them one at a time. They're going to eventually wise up, sell to a Wall Street fund and be done. We do seem to have it still a battle between the stock market and the bond market. It is wild to watch on the sidelines. The stock market is running again by the dip, meme stocks, all kinds of craziness. It is wild to watch from the sidelines. Uh, if you are in some of these stocks, be careful. Just be careful. Maybe take, maybe take your investment back and let it run. I don't know, but be careful. The bond market is still screaming recession. We still have yield curve inversion. It is still dangerous out there. Walmart. Read some more articles about Walmart. They are seeing people increasingly turn away from lunch meat and turn to, turn to canned tuna and beans. Customers are down selecting. This is part of what happens in, with uh, inflation. Target, missed top, missed bottom. Target missed top, missed bottom, and they lowered guidance twice. Target CFO. Bad, bad, bad. Shame on you. You should have taken that second lowered guidance so low you could get over it. That is, uh, that is a bad move uh, by Target's C, uh, CFO. Uh, Target said they are clearing up the clutter and getting ready for the holidays. If you actually read Target's earnings announcement, 
and you looked at their inventory line, their inventory went up. Now, they did say their mix, their inventory mix is better, but I do think it is interesting watching a retailer who says they're blowing out inventory actually have more inventory at the end of the quarter. Just call it what it is. It's an interesting number. Got the mortgage demand data for the week. Uh, mortgage demand is down 1% week on week and down 18% year on year. We got earnings from Lowe's. Lowe's missed on top line, beat on bottom line. Transaction volume down 6%. Lowe's is saying, do it yourself. Buyers like you and I are down, but professionals are up. What might that mean? That might mean people are getting laid off from builders and they're doing side jobs, doing room additions, things of that nature. The housing market is broken. Don't know if you caught this, uh, but UK, UK's inflation rate went double digits, reported double digits, <coughs> excuse me, 10.1%. Couple more uh, earnings and then we will get into the ones um, where we are going to have some uh, interaction. TJ Maxx, a uh, missed top line, beat bottom, and cut outlook. Krispy Kreme, Chris, man, when was the last time I had a Krispy Kreme donut? Missed top line, missed bottom line, but did say commodity prices are falling. All right, folks, we get existing home sales number tomorrow. We talked about the July 20th being the day that the market changed. I think it is validated tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Last month, 5.12 million homes were sold. That's a, you know seasonally adjusted. The expectation is for 4.88. What do you want to call? <coughs> I'm going to call 4.78 million. So 100,000 less homes than um, the experts are calling. We are going to see inventory go up probably 10 to 15 percent. It was at one point, where is it? It was at 1.26. Uh, what, and then there's going to be price. What will price do year on year? So again, let's talk about 4.78. Actually, you know what? Let's do what the experts are calling 4.88. 4.88. Are you going to take the over or the under? Let me know in the comments below. And then on inventory, I'm going to be very interested in the inventory number next month. I have a sneaky suspicion that peak inventory might be this month that's reported. Let's Let's just say that peak inventory, let's say we get 1.5 million homes on the market. But then next month, we get the housing number and inventory is down. Down. Yes, folks, month on month numbers in housing, they turn down as we enter September, October, and November. It's going to be very, very interesting to watch. So, folks, this is your daily financial news. I want to hear what you think. Uh, existing home sales, 4.88. Let me know what you think. Uh, you're going to take the over or the under. All right, everybody, take care of yourself. Have a wonderful day. Bye.